how do you cope with losing your father at such a young age? I mean, I'm still very lucky to have both my parents. You were clearly close, and obviously he'd been through so much of the groundwork with you to create the star that you are today. Do you feel that he's with you here today and through those performances, especially when it's a tough gig, yeah. getting you through it? Definitely. There's no doubt in my mind. Um, things have happened you know, a lot along the way where I know it's been a sign from him that he's... He's here, but I often will talk to him before a big concert. Um, not every day, but on the ones that you know are particularly hard, and I need that extra bit of strength. And um, I just do. I, I I feel he's with me because he was the one that so so much wanted this for me. He understood my passion. Um, you know, he put in all that time of you know running me around and, and making me feel like it was achievable if I put the hard work in um, and believed in me. So he would love to see this now and I'm sure he's somewhere watching and sharing it, but it would be nice to have him here. And I think that's what loss teaches you when you're young is that you wish you could let them experience what you're going through now and the joy and the showbiz of it and the and the fun you're having now for him to see that and be here with you. It must be frustrating that you can't do that. Yeah, it is. Um, so many uh, times, I, my dad used to love Shirley Bassey and the amount of times, you know, I've sung for Dame Shirley or I've, you know, gone to an event with her and, and she's a brilliant laugh and I think, oh, my dad would love this. Um, but that's why I think I make such a fuss of my family now because um, for me the best bit of all of this is getting to take them to um, things that they've always wanted to go to and I took all the family to Parkinson when I did Parkinson and you know my mum got to meet Tom Jones when I was singing with Tom Jones and <laughs> I thought she was going to pass out and it's, the, and it's those bits that are, for me are, are the most rewarding because uh, you just see you see how excited they are and I think that's what gives me a sense of reality and why I you know I, I don't think I'm ever going to take this off for granted. And you seem very grounded, you seem very normal, and you seem like a person that doesn't get wrapped up in the nonsense of this business. It would be very easy to be going out every night. Were you ever tempted to do the Nuts magazine or the Hello magazines and, and all of that business and become part of that cool lot that just want to be in the paper for nothing? No, um, you you get asked to do things. I've been, I, I don't think I've been asked to do Nuts, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but I have been asked to be on the front of some of the other men's magazines in bikinis and things like that. And I don't see the need to want to do that I did recently do a, a shoot for GQ magazine um, and that was something I thought totally different because GQ is a very classy magazine and um, we had people from Vogue working on the shoot but I still had to ask my mum <laughs> <laughs> I actually asked my mum if it was okay and then I had to show her the photos before they were printed in the magazine and I said what do you think and she said hmm well, you would see more of you on the beach. That was, <laughs> that was my mum's reaction. So as long as mum's happy with it, then that's fine. But, you know, I wouldn't want to, to upset her. So that's the rule now then. As long as it's anything else you do in public, it's fine. <laughs> no, no, no. But I, 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 am, I am very wary of my family and all of this. And, um, you know, my family didn't ask to be famous by the association. Um, and I keep trying my best to keep my private life to myself I'll, I'll, I'll answer questions and you know I think people respect that I have got a private life but I'm, I'm, I'm never going to be one to splash it all over the magazines you won't see me selling my wedding I guarantee you um, things like that not that there is a wedding before and I just can I just <laughs> clarify that before I start a massive rumour if there ever was to be a wedding um, if you could just give me a scintilla of hope with that, I tell you why. I could probably get ten and a half grand from the Sun newspaper for that exclusive. No, <laughs> there is no way. <laughs> I'm right. just saying that. Um, I, you know, I just think it's there's a line you have to tread and uh, you have to keep to it. And I, I want to keep it about my music, not about my personal life. The first time I heard your voice, I thought you were good. And then the first time I saw you, I thought you were amazing. And then when I saw you live, you just blew me away. Do you now feel confident in who you are to stand on a stage and just do what you do? Because there's nothing worse than seeing somebody, no matter how good they are, looking uncomfortable. Yeah, I do. I feel, I think I feel at my most comfortable on stage and it doesn't matter if I'm having you know we all have days when we're stressed out and things like that um when I go on stage I totally let go because I know nothing can nothing can interrupt this nothing can spoil this this is my time with the audience and I love that especially in my shows that I, I get that kind of in between songs we have a bit of a, a banter and a laugh and tell us a few stories and 
each show is different in that way. So yeah, that's that's actually my favourite bit of all of this. I think is is the live performance and that having that relationship with the audience. Two questions. Firstly, can you explain to me the feeling when you have a fifty, maybe a hundred, or even two hundred piece orchestra behind you and the roar of those notes, and you have to come in and that's all for you? How does that feel? Um, I I get a little bit shy actually. I know people won't, won't believe that, but when I first walk onto the stage and and people clap, I'm always a bit like, "Wow, have all these people come to see me." <laughs> <laughs> um, it's lovely, but I um, I'm not that extrovert person that some performers are. Um, so I always feel really, really touched. And the orchestra, of the ones that um, have been touring with me from the beginning, the National Symphony Orchestra, I mean, they're amazing. So when, you're, when you've been working with a group for five years or so, um, you know, you know each other so well. Um, it is beautiful. And I, I love that we are able to take a full orchestra out on the road because I think that's, that's the real way to enjoy classical music. I don't think it would work with a backing track, would it really? No, no. I mean, sometimes in situations we, um, as performers, get asked to sing in things where it's not possible to have an orchestra. So in that case, sometimes we do use backing tracks. But my preference is always to have the live musicians. Does it matter who the orchestra is for you or is an orchestra an orchestra? Oh, no, different orchestras have different sounds and obviously there are different qualities of orchestra. Um, and I've been very lucky that I've got to work with you know some of the the top orchestras and and yeah I mean when you have these sometimes you can have a hundred piece orchestra and it's 200 piece orchestra it's amazing you can be quite kind of overwhelmed by by the emotion and the sound of it all um, but I've got some amazing memories of performing one of my favorites was with um, uh, maestro Valerie Gurgiev in Russia because he is one of to me one of the best conductors in the world and just to watch him work with the orchestra was sort of forget the singing I could just sat there and watched him, watched him conduct <laughs> and help me with the conductor because I've always wanted to ask this question but how much of it is theatre and circus and how much are they actually doing that helps you and the orchestra because I see all these wonderful guys waving their arms and I can't follow any of it <laughs> oh god we couldn't do it without them <laughs> no you've got obviously keeping the orchestra together and um, then you know for us we've got to know when to come in if anything goes wrong I mean it's gosh no, they're, they're amazing and now in, in, in my show I haven't even have one of these very clever things where you've got a camera on the conductor and a screen at the stage well they have those in opera so that we don't have to look back we can see them conducting in front of us and let's talk about venues you've been very lucky to work all around the world is there a place you look forward to going back to or does it not matter it's all about the audience and the orchestra the Royal Albert Hall is a, is a definite favourite of mine the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff believe it or not is probably one of my favourite venues just because of um, the atmosphere um and the emotion of singing on my home turf um, but the Sydney Opera House was a, a very emotional one as well because uh, that was just one of my ambitions since I, I was little so to get to sing there was, was huge for me So much can go wrong and even with a live show I'm always fascinated by the fact that you're just a voice that really can't be heard unless you're helped with a PA system and yeah. orchestra How do you keep in perspective the fact that you've just got to cross your fingers and hope for the best because actually you alone aren't enough to fill those stadiums it's an odd <laughs> feeling isn't it it is an odd feeling um and i've had moments where technical things have happened when i sang at the fa cup final um for the first time in wembley the mic went down and i was singing with leslie garrett and uh when i went to sing my verse nobody could hear me <laughs> and it was really 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 frightening and, it, and and it's a shame but technical things happen all the time and Especially with my concerts, I'm quite calm when it comes to technical things because I know that whatever happens, we will get, we will sort it out. We'll have a good laugh about it, and um, it'll be one of those concerts that sticks in my head. <laughs> and the FA Cup thing, I hope you had the sound man fired. <laughs> he deserved it. <laughs> Apparently, they didn't turn the microphone on. What a basic oh. mistake. <laughs>